Microphone check. One, two. Mic check. Right, ladies and gents, we'll be starting in about five minutes time. Uh, we'll, I'll see you in a little bit.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is eight o'clock. Let's get into it with PPI. This is your host, Tony Michael Race, and also the head financial analyst at Financial Juice, US PPI. So what is it and how does it affect the markets? First of all, it's just measuring the price that consumers pay for good, uh, excuse me, that uh, businesses are paying uh, for the goods or services that are being uh, that have been created. Uh, and then how does it affect the markets? So usually what happens is, when the economy is strong, when PPI is quite strong, the dollar tends to strengthen. And we've seen within the past with the economic release with PPI that when it has come in hotter than expected, um, that that has caused uh, the dollar to rally and the stock market uh, to take a hit uh, instead. And so this is again key thing. Um, you know, is inflation is still a, th a thing that people are keeping an eye out for. With CPI, but also PPI two, uh, which in the past hasn't really garnered uh, much tension up until uh, recently, um, when when the expectation of where the Fed will meet their will get to their terminal rate or what the expectations are for the Fed to get to their terminal rate will be. Um, now the inflation picture has kind of died down a, a little bit and has become. Uh, less important compared to whether there is the expectation of a recession or not. And, in the, and is the bond market pricing of the yield curve having been uh, inverted? Uh, is that is that true or will it take um, will it take a bit longer for the economy to actually see the effects of uh, the rate hikes that the Federal Reserve has taken? So in this current instance, though, uh, what we have seen in the past that with inflation if it does rise this sharply with with the ppi data uh, within a month it can lead to stocks taking a hit and with the bond market as said high inflation reads can lead to high yields in an expansionary uh, environment but also in the tightening environment that the federal reserve has um, then that can also mean that uh, if that the uh, bond yields can see an appreciation of course bond prices would see a depreciation on on the flip side uh, as well now um the other thing to be aware of is where is the economy at the moment uh, the key inflation gauges of the us are, uh, it's important to understand that we need to have a look at what is the overall picture and what does that mean for the uh, the ppi print could it be lower than expected or higher than expected well, overall, the picture that's been painted, and we had the CPI remember, on Tuesday, if you were trading that with me, employment cost was up 1% 1, 1 compared to the prior ones, but 2%, and the markets, the stock market had enjoyed that. CPI year-on-year, year, uh, stickier than it has been in the past when we've seen releases, uh, but it is still lower at 6.4% compared to the prior 6.5%. Core CPI year on year also did tick down low at five spot six percent compared to the prior five spot seven percent. Uh, don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, to share the video, like the video, subscribe to the channel, get the word out there if you find this information useful so far. But we've still got a little bit to kind of go, uh, especially with the deviations that we've got to kind of go through as well for the economic release. Hello, everybody. Hello, Trappist29 says, Hey, Tony, once again. MIH with a pink wavy hand and Shane Shady saying hello. Hello to you all. So uh, going back to where the economy is at the moment, ISO manufacturing prices paid at 44 support 5 compared to the prior 39 support 4. Uh, ISM services, private, uh, services uh, prices paid was at 67 spot 8 compared to the prior 67 spot 6. Productivity was also higher than expect, uh, higher than the previous at 3% compared to spot 8%. Uh, input prices are spot 4% compared to the prior of minus 0.6%. Export prices minus 2.6% compared to the prior of minus 0.3%. Uh, PPI year on year 6.2% versus the prior of 7 spot 4%. So you can see the huge gap or the, uh, the, uh, the huge amount that inflation has fallen by in the producer's side of manufacturing uh, the goods and how much, it, how much uh, they're charging uh, the retail businesses. Or services to uh, to buy those uh, goods from them. Uh, core PPI was also lower than expected as well compared to the prior, 5.5% uh, compared to 6.2%. Industrial production data we had uh, yesterday was at 0% compared to the prior of zero, minus 0 0.7%. And manufacturing output was at 1% compared to the prior of minus 1.3%. 
these indicators, as I said, are quite important to understand. First of all, how strong are inflationary pressures in within the US? What is the overall picture that's been that has been created? And then, of course, what is it like for the producer side? Is there more productivity within the US economy, meaning that there's going to be a continuation of prices rising if there's a lot of productivity that's kind of going if there's, if there's going on? Or and also in, is industrial production seeing a huge boost as well? Remember with the PPI report, you've got uh, different stages of making uh, making goods. Okay, so you have the raw materials, then you have the uh, intermediate goods, where the product product made from the raw materials, and then you have the finished goods. Of course, in services, that's different. That's more or less to do with uh, if that's any sort of account accountancy. Uh, and or those sort of things, okay? Or you're using services to transport goods uh, to to and from another place. Now, uh, so that's what industrial. So that's what uh, that's what where the economy is at the moment. So if we're looking at, uh, if we kind of keep going, going back to uh, you know another point about the PPI report. So the reason why people focus on the PPI report, particularly within a tightening environment. And what we've seen in the past is that it can also be an indicator for CPI. So if PPI, right, is, let's say, you know, if it is lower than what we've seen compared to the prior, uh, then, and consumers are paying less for goods, but the producer side, that they're actually paying more uh, to make the goods or services, then that means that those prices could be passed on to consumers later on down the line, which means it's harder for, which means CPI coming down towards the Federal Reserve's target of 2% becomes more difficult. But that doesn't always usually happen overnight or after the print uh, comes out. It's usually a gradual change that happens with the PPI report and the prices being priced, uh, the higher uh, the higher prices being passed on to consumers, or the lower prices uh, being passed on to consumers. Remember, businesses aren't going to chop and change their prices overnight, just like that, unless something drastic happens within the economy. So there's a gradual, key thing to know is there's a gradual move towards consumers maybe paying a higher price or a lower price, depending on how strong uh, the inflation is within the producer side of the economy. So again, uh, just going through, so again, the key point with the finished goods, that's another point of the market, uh, of what the market, but also economists will be looking at is the furnished goods. So furniture, automobiles, uh, meat and gasoline and fuel oil. And if inflation continues to tick up at this point, remember furnished goods is a final stage in making uh, something. Okay, and with services. So if prices are still rising at that point, then that means that there's more of a likelihood for CPI to continue to move towards the upside or remain sticky and I maybe only see a small depreciation in the price of those goods and services. All right, uh, and the key thing is as well is that you have... Uh, food and energy, which makes up about 40% of the finished PPA report. Sivash Buzzground said, what about the issue of jobless claims? How important is it compared to PPI? Well, you've got two conflicts reports. Now, if, so PPI, as I said, inflation is still the overall, or the overall um, point or indicator that traders are looking at. Initial jobless claims with that, now, if initial jobless claims comes in much better than expected, much lower or much worse than expected, that could rock the, that could make it a bit difficult to trade. But it doesn't mean. Uh, but at this point, still PPI is the highlight for uh, is the highlight for for the day compared to jobless claims. Remember, in different p at different points in the business cycle, and where the Federal Reserve is at and what their focus is, then as the focus changes, uh, then other economic releases become more important. So back during the COVID pandemic, PPI or CPI report didn't really matter because the key point was looking at jobs, how many jobs were created or lost, 
um, you know, or how many people are filing for uh, filing for jobless claims for the first time. That that was the important point back then, and then it became the inflation, uh, which became the more important uh, report because it had become too high. It, it was going to get out of control, and then the Federal Reserve kind of switched their tune and were focusing on that instead, and then the markets were kind of uh, following suit. So any of those sort of uh, the points, so this is what we've got to understand is that it's still lingering there uh, for the markets. It just depends now on what how big the deviation uh, is. In the past, we've seen maybe small deviations with the economic release and the markets have either stayed down or up. Okay, But now the picture is slightly changing, so there's also that to, to, to keep an eye out for. So of course we're going to keep an, an eye out for initial jobless claims, but PPI year on year is the the one we're going to be focusing on the main one today. Now the previous report as well for PPI, uh, you had whoops, go back. So in December, the decrease in final demand index can be attributed to 1.6 percent decline in prices for final demand goods. Again, key point to understand if the final, if the furnished goods, if that's where you're seeing the price increases and or continued price increases over a period of time that's not a good thing if we're talking about the next stage which goes on to the consumers if they're having to if businesses start to increase prices to kind of offset the prices that they've they've had to pay uh, for uh, receiving those goods or uh, using the services uh, but in contrast the index for final demand uh, service rose 0.1 percent so the Federal Reserve have mentioned in the past that services side of the economy is the sticky side. And we saw that with the CPI report on Tuesday, where the previous report for December, uh, the services side excluding energy services was at 7%, uh, but then uh, it was at 7.0. 7 but then the next, or the report that we had uh, this week, it was at 72 uh, so that has still remained quite sticky, and that's one of the other things that I had attributed to maybe inflation not falling as fast as uh, maybe economists were expecting. Hence, it was 0.1% above the expectation uh, for CPI. Now, uh, sentiment and investment banks board and the views of, from the markets too. So February 13th, you had uh, Fed dated OAS uh, continues its hawkish repricing with the policy peak rate of 5.22% for July and the Fed meeting up from 4.91% uh, as well. Um, and then you had, so the other thing you had is from Sanders, uh, Sander Morris's, uh, Morris Harris's George Bull. So the good earnings will indeed end up being good for the stocks rather than the opposite of what has been for the last uh, six months. So again, the shift to the economy rather than how long the Fed will rate hike will, uh, how long the Fed will hike for. Again, it's a shift from inflation is more or less going towards the Federal Reserve's target. So does the shift turn to how much the economy will be affected and how soon does that shift happen? Well, with the CPI report that we had on Tuesday, yes, there was a downward reaction uh, on the S&P 500, but then it quickly uh, reversed that and uh, started moving back towards uh, the upside instead. And then, of course, he had his choppy day, his sideways, move, sideways movement for the rest of the uh, the, the day uh, towards the tail end of the, the US session. So this is what I mean. So if with PPI, if we start to see that couple more reports with PPI showing maybe mixed reaction. If the data doesn't show too much of a deviation, then you kind of, then you can kind of see that the markets are thinking, okay, instead of thinking about what the Fed is doing now, because if they're near towards the end of their hiking cycle and getting close towards the terminal rate, then it's just left to how the economy performs. Um, and if earnings keep up uh, with with the, the rate hikes or do they or does the economy start to falter and businesses start to take uh, continued losses or bigger hits uh, with the rate being quite high so that's uh, one thing to also highlight too with the PPI report if it is hotter than expected 
and hotter than the prior figure. Okay, that's the key point too. If it's higher than the previous figure, okay, uh, then that's going to be, that's really going to confuse the market thinking, okay, if producers are still, if the producers are still, you know, setting these high prices, then that means CPI is going to, could be stickier in the future. And that could mean that the Federal Reserve might have to hike for longer and inflation still remains in the picture. But then it's also the likelihood of a recession that also increases as the Federal Reserve, uh, if the expectation for the Federal Reserve uh, raises their, their, their rates, if, if and when, uh, they can, when they do that after they've reached their terminal rate. Of around 5 to 5.25% is what uh, some economists are looking at and what some Fed members have kind of talked about. Uh, then Morgan Stanley said that whilst the recent rise in front end rates support the concept that the Fed may remain restrictive for a longer period than previously thought, the equity market is reluctant to embrace this reality, according to a team led by uh, Wilson, uh, who wrote that in a note, Morgan Stanley. So again, it's the, the point that does the, if inflation or if these indicators do remain higher than if they you know, if they don't if they don't continue to go higher and if they do start to moderate a bit more uh, in the future then uh, or if they have the flip side effect where they are higher than they are still higher than markets are expecting or maybe what the fed is expecting uh, then that could mean that the federal reserve uh, then that mean that could mean the federal reserve could hike on for longer but the market's just thinking, well, that doesn't matter. Inflation is going to come down anyway, and we're already near the terminal rate with the Federal Reserve, so we can continue to do what we, we want to do. Yeah, there'll be initial reaction, but that doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> There's also that thought too, counteracting the thought of uh, that there is still work to, to be uh, done, and there's still that fear about inflation being stronger than expected. Uh, and then also the other point too being that unlike bonds, the equity market is unwilling to accept the reality that the Fed may remain restricted for longer than appreciated. Uh, a hotter CPI could make the markets stay in line. And then of course we had, so the CPI data, yeah, it didn't really keep the markets in line. <laughs> they kind of did, they had the reaction and then they carried on and they decided to move back to towards the upside instead of post the uh, release. But the PPI report, as said, if there is a big enough deviation or if it is bigger than the prior figure, could that help? Uh, could that be another leg? Or, you know, could that help the mark, keep the market in line if it is higher than expected? If it is lower than expected, of course, that's going to help the narrative that inflation is, inflation pressures are coming down, not just from the consumer's point of view, but also from businesses too. Um, there's also that too to be aware of. Uh, then the Fed and government and others as well in their views. So Fed's Bowman says, I expect that ongoing increases will be appropriate to bring the federal funds rate to a sufficiently uh, restrictive level and that it will need to remain there for some time to restore price stability. Williams said the recent data supports the case for additional rate hikes. A year and federal funds rate of between 5 to 5 and 5.5% appears to be reasonable. So giving a more of a hawkish perspective of where the federal funds rate or where the term, term rate should be uh, within and then compared to some of the other members who have been maybe looking at 5.25%. You've had a very strong non-farm payrolls report. You've had a stickier inflation report. PPI, again, another key point, another key release to be aware of uh, that could add to the, you know, another inflationary report. Um, if that is stronger, much stronger than expected, does the expectation for rate hikes also go higher? Now you had yesterday uh, that Fed swaps were no longer pricing in the 2023 base point rate cut. Okay, so that's out of the picture, considering how sticky inflation is. People were traders were trying to price in that the Federal Reserve could cut rates this year or by the end of this year, and that's bam. Out of the picture, but instead, Fed swaps. What they did is they priced in the highest policy rate in July, uh, in July for July 2023 at 5.27%. So, again, in the past, it's 
I've been hovering around 5% and now it's creeped up to the point where it's at 5.27% um, or 5.25%. Something again, it's the expectation that the Federal Reserve are going to continue hiking for longer. And it's been happening for quite a while. The expectation for where the terminal rate ends up has been climbing uh, continuously. Uh, then the IEA, have also, if we're talking about energy prices too, that of course is very key for those businesses that, and those manufacturers and those industrial product producers that use that, uh, and particularly those who provide the services too, like transportation uh, for, uh, for those goods. Uh, if energy prices have continually been going down, well, you also have that the world supply looks set to exceed demand through the first half of 2023. That puts, uh, you know, if there's more oil in the markets that's available, it becomes cheaper. Of course, if there's less that's available within the markets, then it becomes more expensive. Okay, uh, there's, you've got your you've got your demand uh, ex demand aspects to be aware of. So again, uh, another point to be aware of that if you know the IEA is expecting oil prices, is expecting oil supply, should I say, uh, set to exceed demand through the first half of 2023, that also helps that uh, brings the, or alleviates any pressure from, or further alleviates pressure in the energy sector, com considering how it has reacted with, first of all, you had uh, Russia's Lavrov last week talking about cutting production by 500,000 barrels per day, which has seen the oil, which has seen WTI fly <laughs> from that point of view. So, you know, again, if the IEA is seeing a, a different picture to what the markets have been, how the markets have been trading, then uh, again, it just adds to that a picture that maybe inflationary pressures in the energy sector are going to continue to come down despite any other uh, shocks that uh, occur. Right, so hello Bricktop, hello Uko Mako, hello. All right, so the triggers end for the economic release. What are economists expecting? So you have the highest mid of of whether point uh, point seven percent for the month on month. Median estimate is point four percent, so you're looking at a point three percent deviation, and the, the low end they're looking at point again a point three deviation at point one percent. Okay, the year on year with a high expectation of 5.5% and a low expectation of 5.2%. Okay, so 0.1 deviation for the PPI data uh, and then a 0.2 deviation on, on, on the low end there Okay, for the, compared to the forecast. So that's tighter for the year on year compared to what we've seen with the CPI report or the expectation for the C expectations for the CPI report on Tuesday. Um, which could mean that if prices are much higher, if it is much higher than 5.5%, then you might there might be a bit more pain uh, to come along for the uh, stock market. Core month to month uh, with the highest mid of spot 5% and the low of spot 1%, and then core year on year with the highest mid of 5 spot 1%. And then a low of four spots, seven percent. So again, point two deviations there. Quite tight. Uh, what market? Uh, what economists are looking at for the uh, PPI uh, report? Now, here is the previous reaction of what we'd seen uh, from the last report that we had for PPI. Okay, so this is about ten seconds before the prior prior release. We are back on January eighteenth. Okay, so data came out. It was uh, lower than expected. Okay, a six spot two uh, percent is what you had there compared to the forecast of six spot eight percent. So 0.4 percent deviation, and this is the market reaction that we had seen. So if we were look, if we're thinking, if economists are thinking of about at least a 0.2 deviation, we're probably looking at at least 0.3 deviation compared to the, the forecast for the data. Uh, to see uh, movement, if we do e either way, to see a bigger amount of uh, a, a stronger amount of volatility. If 
I kind of just skip forward. Also, at the same time, you did have retail sales too. So retail sales was also uh, worse than expected. So that also helped uh, the, uh, the stock market see a bit of a move towards the upside. Of course, we have initial jobless claims. So if the data for initial jobless claims is worse than expected, that plays in the hand of the stock market. Um, if that means that the stock market would see a move towards the upside and could see a move towards the upside instead. Um, if the Federal Reserve may have to instead cut rates uh, in 2023 rather than later, okay, uh, or maybe pause with their rate hiking path uh, sooner rather than later. But there we go. So this has how the markets were. So you can see if we kind of skip forward. Okay, so after that reaction, after the data has come out, see the stock market, it had the initial reaction and then it uh, cleared uh, on the S&P 500. Oh, no, this one on the Nasdaq. It cleared uh, its uh, the initial move prior to the release, but on the uh, dollar yen, it was it did take a bit longer uh, for the economic release to actually or for the for the market to uh, move back uh, towards uh, the upside. I'll kind of move forward a bit more, or erase its uh, initial uh, move compared to the uh, prior level so you see here on cable and the euro dollar it was a bit it was a bit choppier but you did have that uh, initial reaction there it wasn't as big um, as we'd seen so in that case we just kind of escape this and if we look at the deviations okay there we go we'll have a look here let's get the report Okay, so the PPI report then, okay, so you had uh, a move, a, a decent, uh, had all the data that was lower than expected, barring the core month and month, but the market reaction, still seen a decent market reaction, particularly within uh, the, so the stock market had seen a, a decent reaction initially there, right? So this shows the initial reaction here, where it says 50 uh, ticks up. Uh, and that means that, so I go from when I'm measuring these candles, I'm going from the start of the candle to the wick of the candle to capture the initial move. And then this shows the movement 10 minutes after the uh, release where uh, you see 10 minutes after the release, um, showing you the movement on a one minute chart uh, and then go to the end of that candle, not to the wick. So you can see it reversed uh, pretty quickly. Um, within that time frame that we had seen with this sort of data as well. Compared to look what, we, what we had prior, when the data was higher than expected, the markets stay down uh, for longer. But when the data was falling uh, in line, you know, and it was more or less going as it, traders were expecting it to, to go, uh, the markets were able to uh, kind of take that, kind of take a bit of a sigh of relief. We've got less than a minute now, by the way. But we can see the dollar yen currency pairwise was the biggest reactor last time around. Of course, the inflationary pressures are down. So the dollar yen had taken a big hit um, off of that uh, there. Okay, so currency wise, dollar yen uh, stock market may be a bit more mixed if they uh, if they're disregarding inflationary pressures and how strong they are. But if it is higher than expected, we could see a reaction like this overall if inflation is much higher overall. Uh, that is that could be that could happen and the dollar could fly if it's much higher than expected right we've got about 20 seconds let's close that so higher than expected ppr report not great for stocks lower than expected great for stocks uh let's go get our ticks right up running okay it's housing and data Okay, 6%, 6%, higher than the forecast of 5 spot, 4%. Okay, uh, PPI month on month, spot 7%, spot 7%, spot 7%, 7%, higher than the forecast of 0 spot, 4%. Core PPI year on year, 5 spot, 4%, 5 spot, 4%, higher than the forecast of 4 spot, 9%. Core PPI month on month, spot 5%, spot 5%, higher than the forecast of spot 3%. 
uh, continued uh, initial drops claims 194k 194k lower than the forecast of 200k but again ppi being uh higher than expected there we go <laughs> dollar moved uh let's see kind of how long this initial move uh rea uh, lasts for that's also going to be uh quite key to see what happens there uh so it is moving. Okay. Right. So still seeing that. Uh, S&P is still not having a good time. Okay. Let's keep it on gold too. So we've got two. So if we're looking at the two year bond price. Uh, which is the rate sensitive uh, bond. Okay, let's go here. Let's go. Right, let's measure that. Ooh. Okay, it's about, to be honest, it's not a huge move compared to what we'd seen last time around uh, with. Or in the past with the with the dolly n. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Tony said Bricktop says, oopsie, here we go. Tony, can you explain why markets are exploding up? It makes no sense to me. What do you mean why markets are exploding? We're literally looking at the S P is going down. <laughs> what side which which point are we talking about? <laughs> are we talking about the dollar rallying? Because <laughs> that's what I see at the moment. <laughs> and the stock market is taking a hit. <laughs> Scotch and stocks. Oh, wait. Uh, I think we are in a recession rhetoric. Well, well, this, the, the, if, yeah. So earlier on, I was talking about the, um, the point of whether or not, or how strong is a recessionary talk. But at the moment, so if you remember what I said, if data is much higher than expected, which it was, and inflation isn't coming down, that leads to the expectation for the Federal Reserve to hike for uh, longer, or oh, and the possibility of a rate cut to happen in 2023 is out the window. Um, so that's what the markets are reacting to now. So the point, if we're talking about recessionary talk, um, and uh, if we're talking about recessionary talk, and the expectation for uh, the... Uh, for a recession and it kind of depends on how the markets react here do they kind of carry if does it reverse quickly or does it uh, continue its uh, downward movement and then you'll kind of know how important the recessionary yes the recessionary talk is important but markets will kind of tell you and all right let's kind of measure the rest let's see All right, there we go. 58 ticks there. So I think that's a slightly, as a slightly bigger movement compared to what we've seen um, in the in the past on the uh, S and P 500. Let's bring it back up. Yeah. So the initial move on the S and P 500 here today was bigger than it was uh, last time around. Stock markets are not liking at all. Euro dollar two. Man, some of you guys are a bit crazy in the chat. Pricked <laughs> uh, <break> off. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, sorry, that was from before the release. I'm kind of just seeing how the markets are taking it. Alejandro Trappist 29 said, damn. Alejandro R says forecasts are being unrealistic. Oh, Italo says minus 3K in 20 seconds. Lol. Scotch and Sock saying uh, this should rally. Uh, this should rally markets at open. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think it's because they're expecting inflation to just uh, drop down. Like last time round, right? You had a 0.4 deviation on uh, the inflation, oh, excuse me, on, on PPI, on the PPI report. Okay, But um, still, okay, maybe today, if he dies, he dies. <laughs> maybe that that's what that's what PBI has just said. <laughs> uh, yeah, not yet a big move. Not compared to what we've seen last time around. Um, with the PPO report. All right. Uh, so don't forget if you've enjoyed this video so far, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and get the word out there. Share it with your family, your friends, even your pet dog or cat. Doesn't matter. As long as we're getting people, as long as we're getting bodies that are watching this, and then that, that's all that matters. I kid, of course. If you genuinely enjoy the content, then do get the word out there. Wow. Okay. It's not having a good day. Uh, but the dollar yen, not really showing what the mark, what the stock markets uh, is is showing. Actually, you know what? Whilst you guys have got you here, let's kind of go through the PPO report in a bit more detail, right? Why the stocks? Why is the stock market still going down? And why is the dollar like this? So let's kind of go zoom in to this here. Okay, so final demand services was okay. Right, that was a bit higher. Hmm. Yeah, so services is having an impact, by the way, for intermediate demand. Uh, moved 0.5% in January after no change in uh, December, which is, again, services side is still the sticky side, so the stock market isn't liking that. We'll see what the markets are pricing in as well. Through. Fund demand, index fund demand goods moved up 1.2% in January, the largest increase since rising 2.1% in June 2022. Uh, most of the attribute, most of the advances is attributable to a five percent jump in prices for final demand energy. Well, will you look at that? <laughs> energy prices started to come back, huh? Just as we had the uh, IEA uh, yesterday talking about, well, okay, for twenty twenty three, or the expectation, and what we've seen from the past CPI reports and inflation reports that energy prices are going down. No, son, not today. Not today. All right. Uh, what else do we have? That's basically it. I think uh, there's more to kind of go through through the report, but you can see that the markets haven't haven't liked that. Um, of course, you had the dolly yen, but yeah, it did reach its uh, level prior to the release, but kind of holding there. But we'll see how long that lasts. Uh, right now, if you have been watching and you have been listening in to my soothing voice, well, you're going to hear my soothing voice for a little bit longer. Financial Juice, a live voiced voice and text service. Okay, that gives you updates on what the markets are doing, why the markets are moving in a certain way, updates on who's saying something. Maybe Powell is going schizo. Or going crazy on the mic, drops a beat, boom, uh, drops. <laughs> Maybe the next FMC just goes up to the to the stand and says, "We're going to uh, hike by another uh, twenty five basis points now," and then <laughs> drop the mic. <laughs> just leaves. Anyway, you you get the idea. Keeping up to date with what's going on in the markets and the global news that could have a big macro effect. Okay. Um, and that's all here on one place. 
in one place on our finance juice newsfeed. So you have your voice feed here, your text headlines, uh, your, your, your news feed here coming through as well. Uh, the need to know market risk to tell you what's happened or what to expect uh, for your session ahead. What's going to affect risk? What do you need to what do you need to know? Right? What do you need to understand? What's going to be the major driver or has been the major driver of the session uh, so far? Okay, that's all there. Uh, and then you also have your economic calendar here on the left hand side as well, all in one place. So Financial juice. So remember, a live voice and text service is something that a, a you know investment banks have access to. The big boys, right? Compared to the retail traders, you might not you know may not have come across it, may have heard of it, or may not have experienced it, or may have thought, okay, this isn't for me. Okay, if it isn't for you, then fine, fair enough. But if it is something you're interested in taking a look at, um, then you can sign up to Financial Juice create an account, have a little play with it and see if trading the news and understanding why the markets are moving and having a, a live voice and text service um, for you, that will add to your trading uh, arsenal, basically, right? If you know why the markets are moving in a certain way, that helps a lot. And that's what I think. Um, but so financial juice so i'll put in the link there for the website and ah, the markets are still going down son um financial juice that is the link to the website now if you like the so the, the link that i've sent there when if you do sign up to financial juice for the first time uh you'll be on the light version on the non-pro version now that's still useful to have a you know have a little play with but if you want, but there are adverts on there. Uh, there is a delay on the website too, on the, on the news feed uh, for data and headlines. Um, but if you want the pro version of Financial Juice, there'll be a little button here, which says go pro, right? And then uh, you can pay for that. And then once you've paid for that, just make sure you, uh, so make sure if you do pay for the pro version, you log out of your account and log back in, and then that will activate your pro account. If you don't see this, then do give us uh, an, an email and we can kind of guide you through. But first things first, before you go pro, if you do if you, if you do decide you want to go pro straight away, first, you need to create an account on Financial Juice. Have your login and, uh, and username. Okay, username and password, right? Have that first, otherwise it makes it difficult to try and sort out an account, account issues if you do decide to go through uh, that way there. So create an account first, uh, verify your account through your email, come back to the site, click on the GoPro, pay for it, go back to the website, log out, log back in, uh, and then you have access to Pro. Also with uh, the sound as well, if you think the sound is not cutting out, if you think the sound is cutting out or not playing all the time, uh, just make sure you have your site settings to put sound and notifications on allow. So that means you can hide your tab um, and you can look at something else at the same time and still have the voice news uh, playing in the, in the background for you if you had those issues in the past i'm telling you now here as well now uh so the link is put there in the in the, in the chat as well and markets wow not liking it today um so at the other point yeah so with the pro version you have no adverts playing you have a live voice right as a uh if you are listening to the financial news news, news feed on this YouTube stream, there's uh, a little bit of uh, there's a little bit of a delay. I think that's just with the uh, with the YouTube platform as it is. Um, but on the on the news feed, there are no delays, no adverts that are played, no advert banners that that come through, and you're able to uh, also you're also able to have access to the news desk, i.e., talk to uh, the tri the analysts here and ask them any questions that you have about why the markets are moving in, in a certain way or what's 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 going on here um then you can you can do that okay so uh tick strike as well so if you're well, if we're looking at tick strike here so you can see this if you're thinking what's all this minus and plus thing that's going on what are these colors for so tick strike what it does if you've come across tick strike then you know do say hey hey Give a thumbs up in the chat. Um, 
if you haven't come across what tick strike is, jeepers, creepers. My God. <laughs> Bloodbath. Um, so if the... Sorry, I'm listening to tick strike. So tick strike allows you to listen to the strength of the buying and selling momentum. Mester is also speaking to... Saying that I expect to make significant progress in... We expect to make significant progress in lowering inflation... The extent to which Fed raises rates in the future is determined by inflation. So again, inflation is still the key point here. So if PPI can be much higher than expected, that's kind of adding to the that's kind of adding to the the fire, right? With the with the fuel fuel to the fire. But going back to tick strike, what it does uh, is, as I said, it allows you to listen to the order flow within the markets. Okay, buying and selling. Well, another simple way to put it: How strong is the buying or selling momentum? Sludge says, I hear those tick strike ticks in my sleep. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know how you feel, buddy. <laughs> I know exactly how you feel. Um, but yes, yeah, so it allows you to listen to how strong or well, how strong the buying or selling momentum is. Now, the way you can kind of adjust that to what it, you, see, you see, you see these numbers here, where it says minus 13, minus one. So this shows you the level of sensitivity. Okay. So one is the most sensitive to market reactions. So if there's, as you can see, there's a little bit of buying or selling going on, then tick strike will uh, go off. All right. Uh, and then if you increase that level all the way to 15, okay, 15, whoops, 15 is the least sensitive to market reactions. Only when there's a big amount of buying or selling, selling momentum that's going on will uh, tick strike go off. But it did hit that on the the S and P uh, compared to where that um, where that asset is trading um, at that moment. Mester saying upside risks to inflation remain in place. January CPI data show that there's still more to do on cooling inflation. Okay, so um, yeah, not nice. But again, so 15 is the least sensitive. One is the most sensitive to market reactions. Uh, one being the most, uh, so if there's a little bit of buying and selling going on, one will kind of go off all the time, uh, but 15 will take a bit, it'll take a bit longer. Or maybe not, depending on what the markets are like today, you can see how, how it's reacting. But you can chop and change that to whatever level you want it to be, okay? Um, so particularly, you know, if you're day trading, you're scalping, you know, then it's the perfect, it's the perfect tool to kind of add to your arsenal as well. That's kind of, uh, you yeah, use that in your way. So you can uh, have a little play with it. Yes, uh, so tick strike can be used for Forex, crypto, stocks and futures, and also internals like your VIX too. Um, that can, can also be used uh, for, for that. But I've put in the link for tick strike. Again, there's a seven day free trial, completely free. Have a little play with it. You know, um, see what you think about it. If it's something for, for you, if it's not, then fine. Uh, that's that's totally up to you. Uh, but do give us your feedback there. And then finally, if you want the access to the deviations, okay, the deviations for the economic release, um, which, as I shown you before, how much have the markets moved depending on how, what the how big or large, uh, big or small the deviation was for an economic release. More economic release uh, is important to keep an eye out for for the week. Okay, that's what I provide in the mailing list. Okay, so not only do I provide the deviations for the economic releases, but I give a short summary of what to expect for the week ahead in Asia, the European session, and the uh, US session, and a summary of the weekend news. It's not filled with charts or graphs. It's just a simple little bit. It's a little short paragraph, short paragraphs here and there, um, of of just text of expectations for the week ahead. Uh, but the nitty gritty comes along with me speaking to you here uh, and showing you. Uh, doing this wonderful presentation delightful presentation <laughs> i don't know if anyone watches wrestling <laughs> but if you do then you would understand that reference but anyway there's the link there uh, and then finally you can also trade you know if you like trading unusual volume activity in stocks forex futures then you can uh, join the free beta test group of our new service of unusual activity and just give us your thoughts and opinions on how that if how that was working for you, if it does work for you or not. Uh, but for now, that basically does it for the week. We've had CPI, which is sticky, and then PPI, which is hotter than expected. Markets are still not liking it. Uh, but yes. 
Bricktop says, indeed, Tony, thanks. Taylor Adams says, what's up, my man? Been looking at your website since a friend turned me on to it. Very cool. I appreciate that. Let, hey, let's get the word out there to even more of your friends uh, as well. And don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and get the word out there. If you found the, of course, if you found the information genuinely useful for you, then go ahead and do that. If you didn't, let me know. And what can what can we do to improve? What can we do? What can we do to uh, change things? I'll put my email in so you can uh, do that. All right. Well, enjoy the rest of your uh, week. Have a great Thursday. We'll see how long this uh, <laughs> is. How the the uh, this uh, blood lasts for. <laughs> um, but for now, all right. take care, guys. All right. Thank you.